So in this video, somebody asked me, are there any aptitude tests that you can take to determine whether or not you will be a competent coder? So we're going to jump into this email I got from this dude who's uh, 50 years old, middle-aged, middle-aged. I wouldn't consider that old since, you know, I'm 169, so it's quite young for me. So he is a, a guy who started trying to learn to code way back in the 90s when I was coding, uh, well, well, when I started to code. And he said, it's been a total disaster. So I'll read just a snippet and then we'll get into the conversation. I really want to overcome my early issues in my career and succeed, but I have difficulty understanding complex subjects, especially where there is any mathematical or analytical depths. So that would include the basis of the job, which is creating complex statements to produce a desired result. However, I found even more and agonizing was resolving and fixing existing code, including what I've written myself. Welcome to the world of development. Debugging is the worst part of coding, and it's the biggest part of coding. That's why when you write code, you better write simple code, so it's simple, well, a little easier to debug. In fact, when I evaluate people's code, simplicity is the first thing I look for. Simple, fine-grained objects, as I like to say. You can look that up. Uh, it makes debugging a lot easier, and the difference between experienced and good programmers, developers, and not so good is good programmers write simple code. Anyway, debugging still holds really painful memories for me personally. The old IBM OS 400 green screen I used to suffer on. I worked with Java, J JDK1, JDK1, that's really old stuff. So basically, I won't go into the whole detail. So he struggled initially with, with what everybody struggles with initially, debugging, uh, coming up with logics, uh, refining conditional statements, arrays, parameters. He says here, uh, used to make me climb walls. I'm feeling... The, humili the humiliation and feeling of never making it while other people breathe it is something I've always wanted to overcome, but fear stopped me. So he says, uh, my question to you, are there any aptitude tests that I can take to assess my ability to do the job so it's not another fail? I really want to succeed, but it's difficult to know if I can. So first of all, there are no really aptitude tests except doing it, first of all. Second of all, it's normal for people to have difficulty in debugging, even your own code. Actually, Perl, which was fam a famously terse and flexible programming language, no scripting language, and it's still used out there. And uh, one of the jokes in the Perl world was that you write Perl, your own Perl, and you won't be able to decipher what the heck you were trying to do even three months later, your own code. That's because Perl was made so flexible and you could do something in 10 different ways. Uh, the the uh, code itself is it, it's not implicit, meaning there's a lot of functionality buried into Perl. So you can write very few lines of code to get a lot done. Now, this sounds good on paper. The problem is when you go back to look at that code, you're like, what the heck was I trying to do here? So, um, yeah. So there's no test you can take except to test yourself in the game. Now, here's the thing. All, this, all the issues he dealt with is normal for beginners to have to contend with. And the only way you get better at that, like anything else, is to keep working at it, to keep building things. And over time, your brain will start creating the new neural connections and will start, you'll start becoming more and more efficient at it. I give tricks in my training courses uh, how to um, become better at debugging, better at doing these things, better at understanding the code and being able to write code more quickly than uh, otherwise. One of the tricks I talk about is once you get a piece of code working, break it, see what the error message is, and you start, your brain will start being able, being able to make connections between the type of error and the error message, which will start speeding up your coding capabilities. Uh, he mentioned at one point in the, in the, in the uh, email here, uh, typing speed. I, I was worried about a typing speed. Again, that's a non-issue as well. It will come, your speed will come uh, over time, that's for sure. Especially if you just discipline yourself. You take your keyboard and you put your hands, your fingers, don't do this. Use all your fingers. And you put your finger on the keyboard. So what will happen is your muscle memory take over. 
as you practice. Now, at first, it's going to be a little bit slower, and you're going to have to look down. But if you discipline yourself initially to do that in terms of typing, eventually this will become like this. Now, I can tell you today, after decades of programming, I, could, I couldn't tell you, you know, if, you know, I know where the D key is, but M and M, like I couldn't write cognitively. My higher brain wouldn't know where that key is, but my lizard brain knows where the N is. It's really interesting. So if I don't look at the keyboard, my, my finger knows where to go, even though intellectually I couldn't draw it out on, on a map. That's where lizard wizard training will come in handy. Links below. Anyway, um, but that being said, something I've mentioned in several videos, typing speed is not that important these days. Why isn't it important? Because with software uh, like IDEs, integrated development software, and code editing software, they just speed up the whole coding process. So typically, let's say you're, whatever language you're writing in, you start writing the first or two letters of a function or something that's built into the language, which you'll be using a lot, the uh, good code editors will, will know what you're typing and complete the line for you. Especially with the new AI-driven code editors, some, they're, so, they're getting pretty good. They're, they're like co-completion on steroids where traditional code completion, you write the first two words, the first you know, half of a function name or something, and it will suggest all the functions, and you just go tab, boom, and, and it writes it out for you. Uh, with the more advanced ones, I've done some reviews on them, uh, in the past, uh, you write the first few letters of a uh, function or a method or whatever you write, and it'll write the whole chunk for you. <laughs> and it'll do a pretty good job. What you have to understand, though, if, especially if you're a beginner watching this, coding, writing of the code is kind of the, the end of the job, if you will. It's the last part. Don't get caught up in it. The hard part about writing software is figuring out how to solve a particular problem, what type of language to use, or what, what frameworks or libraries to use, or how to logically uh, figure, do what you need to get done with the language. The code writing itself is kind of the icing on the cake. A big part of your time will be debugging as well. So that's why it's very important that you write simple, simple code. Anyway, so my advice for this dude, um, I think that you just didn't give yourself enough of a chance. When people send me questions, unless they say, you can say it publicly, I don't reveal who they are. You didn't give yourself enough of a chance. What you experience in terms of the difficulty, uh, debugging, and so on, this is normal for everybody. It's a frustrating process. It's that wall you have to get over. That's why in my mentoring group, links below, uh, in my mentoring group, which is my boot camp, I teach people to what they need to know to get the foundation, so they have the foundations, so they understand their way around code well enough, and then I get them building real things. That's how you're going to flex your muscles in the coding world. It's just like fighting, boxing, anything in life, really. So uh, when I was learning how to box, my coach got, us, got our fundamentals down, and then he'd get us in the ring right away, and we'd spar. And as we were sparring, we were learning the craft and refining ourselves. And as I've told people in several videos, uh, one sparring session, three rounds, is worth six months of training outside of the ring. Same thing with uh, software development. One completed website even, one completed WordPress install and configuration, theme update, is worth months and months of tutorials. Don't get yourself in... Um, Tutorial hell, which is being in the state of mind where you feel you need to do more and more training in terms of taking tutorials or taking aptitude tests and so on. Final point about this whole thing. If you are writing code, learning to write code, especially in the web stack, there's many different types of coding. It's, it's like C++ game engine design is very different from JavaScript development uh, for the browser and um, PHP uh, server-side coding is very different from Android development in Java on the, you know, for mobile devices. I could go on and on with all kinds of different examples. The point is, all programming is not equal. A lot of it is very visual, meaning not too much math involved. A lot of coding could be just setting up um, 
skeletons, if you will, for an application. That's the higher level architects would do that. And you don't necessarily have to get deep and dog deep into debugging and so on. So I would suggest to you that uh, you're just dealing with the normal day-to-day uh, beginner beginner intermediate level type of problems that you have to deal with when you learn how to code and that, that's the hump you have to get over that is why coding is so valuable one of the reasons anyway is that people hit that wall and they feel it's hopeless and they give up meanwhile if they would just push through a little bit they would reach their goals this i came into coding with a design background a visual background i was still able to have uh, a lot of success in the game I've written software in many different languages and built all kinds of systems. And yeah, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Just get through that hump and you'll be fine. I can guarantee it. So anybody else watching this, you're having the same difficulty. It's normal. Uh, I'll give you a little piece of advice in terms of uh, how to learn. I spend a minimum 20 minutes a day, four to five days a week, maximum three to four hours. And if you hit something, like a problem where you can't debug it, you can't figure it out after like half an hour, 30 minutes, move on to something else, take a break. Typically what happens the next day you wake up and you go, oh, now I understand how to do it. Again, you gotta give yourself, you gotta give your brain a chance to create those new neural networks, literally, so that it can start uh, optimizing itself for this new type of thinking. That is software development. All right, I hope you found this video useful. I'm Steph, and if you want to learn from me, you can check out the links below. I have my bootcamp slash mentoring program. The average bootcamp will cost you $13,000 in the U.S., and you can get my bootcamp right now for far, 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 far less. Anyway, look below. You can see why. Bye-bye.